Today, uh, what we're going to be talking about is what we call a shooting development model. And that's taking, um, taking an individual who's first starting the game, showing you how we go about teaching shooting at the University of Illinois to a player beginning the game, how we teach shooting to a player who's kind of in their middle, an intermediate level player, and then what we do with our elite level athletes when we want to finish them off at the very end. My name is Mike Frogley. I'm the head coach of the men's team at the University of Illinois. Helping me today is Steph Wheeler. She's one of our former student athletes and currently the head coach of our women's team and an outstanding coach of athletes at all levels. So what we're going to be talking about are those three parts. Okay, the first part for beginners, an intermediate level, and then a, a level at the top, the elite level. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do something called cowboy shooting. Cowboy shooting is what we teach our beginning athletes when we want, to get, want them to get the basics of what shooting looks like. We don't want to have them spend a lot of time learning about, you know, you got to have your wrist cocked here and your elbow's got to be at this angle and all those types of things because we really feel like that gets in the way of giving them the basics. Plus, you want to understand where athletes are coming from, particularly young athletes. For those of you that are coaching athletes that are say six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, this really fits well. It's a really good way of teaching basic shooting, getting them a, an understanding of what it looks like without flooding them with a lot of stuff that ends up being a distraction. So what I'd do if I was working with a beginning athlete, and Steph's gonna model this, I'd come over in front of Steph and I'd have Steph line up on the free throw line She's going to be facing me. And I tell her, Steph, what I want you to do, I want you to pretend you're playing a video game. And you're sitting there with your hands dangling from your side, just like one of those gunfighters in a video game. What I want you to do, I want you to draw your gun. Okay? Then what I want you to do, you understand that when you draw your gun, one of the things you always do is step forward. So we're going to turn your chair a little bit. So it's at a slight angle. Now take that gun with your thumb and put that thumb on the eyebrow of your shooting hand. So I'm right-handed, so it's on my right eyebrow, eyebrow. Spread your fingers. Turn your palm so it faces forwards. Cock your wrist. Bring your guide hand up and shoot. So it's a really simple way for us to give the basics of what a shot looks like to kids that are seven, eight, nine years old, or what we call a late entry athlete. Say somebody who's 23 years old, injured, maybe they play a lot of high school football, and just getting them back into the basics without flooding them with too many things, too many details that actually end up getting in the way of learning uh, the beginnings of a shot. So again, all I do, start off, have her dangle her hands, tell her to shake them a little bit, because you gotta be loose. Can't be tight if you're a gunfighter. Okay? Draw your gun. You turn your chair just a little bit. Take your thumb, put it on your eyebrow, the eyebrow of the hand that you shoot with. Spread your fingers. Point your palm forward. Cock your wrist. Put your guide hand up. And follow through. Really simple, really fast. And you know what? Young kids especially, a lot of the kids that are the prep age, it's fun. It's a fun way to teach them. And that keeps them interested. Once I get that done, then I'd probably have them shoot on a basket or against the wall at what I think is gonna be an appropriate starting point. And then I would just keep reminding them of those things. So we're gonna watch Steph go through that a couple of times on her own and then take some shots. So I'll hold the ball. She'll get ready to shoot. When she has her hand cocked, I'm gonna give her the ball. Yep, go ahead, shoot. Okay. Now, saw a great thing happen there. Steph's a national team player. She's played on the team for years, she has a great three-point shot, but she didn't make it to the basket. When I'm teaching 
shooting to kids this age, I'm not worried about them keeping the ball up. So I'm going to tell Steph, you do whatever you need to do to generate power. If you need to bring the ball down to your lap, go ahead and do that. If you need to roll a little bit, that's okay too. So she can learn how to generate power. So go through the whole process again. You can have her get her wrist cocked, get ready. I'm gonna give her the ball, and then if she wants to bring it down, she can bring it down. Okay? If Steph was having difficulty shooting, I might move her forward to this line here. So go ahead, move forward, Steph. We don't want making a basket to become a distraction from the kids focusing on their mechanics, on having the beginnings of a good shot. So if we need to move them forward to the point where they can have good mechanics and make a basket, then we do that. So she's gonna do it again. Oops. So that's a really simple way of introducing kids to shooting. Going back to the free throw line. Now, what I would do now, with young kids especially, but this works for late entry athletes, is now you've got something they can all take home and practice at home. Right? You don't need to have a coach standing there teaching cowboy shooting. They can sit in their basement and they can do it. They can be out in the driveway, they can do it. They can be in their bedroom, they can do it. And they don't need to have a ball shaking their hands, drawing, and shooting. They can do that anywhere in the house, in the driveway. They can do it with their physical education teacher. It's a great way for you to have parents interact with their kids. Because parents can sit down in a chair right in front of their kids and mirror all of these things. And that's the beauty of it, is that it's really simple for anybody to get doing. Does anybody have any questions before we move on to what we would call the intermediate level? Okay. So the next thing we're going to move on to is our intermediate level. What we're going to be referring to here to help guide us is an acronym, BEEF. A lot of you have heard it. It's a really common term in able-bodied basketball. And the B is balance, the first E is I, the second E is elbow, and the third one is follow through. The F is follow through. Okay. Now, with wheelchair basketball, there are some wheelchair basketball specific things to be aware of with each one of these acronyms. And there are functional things that now we now start to enter in as we look at how different classifications of players shoot and how you use the different muscles you've got to shoot. So we'll talk about that. We move to this step. Once you think the kid that you're working with, whether it's a seven, eight, nine-year-old, or a new, a new athlete that's, say, 23 and a recent injury, once you think they've got down the basics of the form for shooting, they don't have to be perfect. You just have to have a feel that they've got the basics. Okay? So the first balance we're going to talk about is balance in the chair. In able body basketball, they always talk about your stance and where your feet are. For us, it's balance in the chair. So Steph is a class two. When she shoots, in order for her to have balance, she's got to be leaning into her backrest. That's where she gets stability because she doesn't have the back muscles to give her that stability when she shoots. If you have a class one, they should be leaning into their backrest. If you have a higher class player, a three or a four in the functional system, they're going to use more of their trunk muscles for stability and they may begin to use their legs to, sta to stabilize themselves in the chair. We want them to use their legs if they've got leg function. 